You are listening to Adoptees On, the podcast where adoptees discuss the adoption experience. I'm your host, Haley Radke, and this is a bonus episode where I interview my husband and we reveal the topic for season four. Nick gives some insight on what it's like to be married to an adopted person. So I hope that you will find that helpful today. We recorded this in our living room. And if you hear some rustling, I'm very sorry. I want you to picture my cute dog snuggling up. I know it's just such a big no-no for sound quality, but I needed some comfort as Nick reveals some painful truths of the ways he was impacted during my reunion with my first father. Let's listen in. Hi, honey. Hi. Do you want to say who you are? Sure. My name is Nick. I am Haley's husband. (laughs) I'm your husband. (laughs) Sounds official. I'm Haley's husband. Mm. Uh, When did we meet and when did we get married? How long have we been married? On October, no, sorry, we met in September of 2001 at school. And we started dating in October of that year. And we were married on August 7th, 2004. <laughs> so we're coming up on 14 years. Yeah, yeah, I forgot that. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. I was 18 when we met. You had, and you yeah, were, you had just, well, yeah, we were both, we were 18. both 18. You had just turned 18. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, our adult lives have been together. Yeah. Okay, so I asked you on because this is sort of like a sneak preview into season four because we are going to be talking about relationships in all varieties. So intimate partner relationships, but also sibling, parent, as a parent, and with our first parents. I'm going to have someone on to talk about their relationship with their coworkers. I mean, we're talking about all kinds of different relationships. What is it like being married to... An adopted person. What are the weird quirks that you think <laughs> that I bring to this relationship <laughs> as being the, the special <laughs> basket case that I am? <laughs> well, uh, when we first started dating, I remember you telling me, I think pretty early on, that you were adopted. And it was kind of just an interesting fact at that moment in time. I remember thinking, oh, okay, that's interesting. I've known a couple people that were adopted, and it made no difference really to me. But I think you had also made it pretty clear early on that you did not know either of your birth parents. So it was kind of like I just thought, well, that's part of your life, and that you've known your adoptive parents your whole life and those are your parents and that's just how things are and that's great and I hadn't had any close encounters with anyone that's adopted just kind of had acquaintances so didn't know if there's anything more that I needed to know I thought you would probably tell me if there was but otherwise (laughs) life moves on yeah yeah and um well and it did for the first while even getting married there was really no change or any quirks or whatever, you, however you put it. When the records were open, that's when I recall first discussing it again and how you were interested in learning about or, or getting these records and, and finding the information. And I was there ready to support you. Also just thought, I'm here if you need me. This is this is interesting and I'm not sure where we go from here. And I I definitely didn't realize or had no thought of what kind of a emotional roller coaster it might turn into. (laughs) Okay. So we were already married when I found my birth mother. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. definitely. And so I shared that story in season one in the finale about, meeting her and being in a relationship for a brief period of time. And then she cut off contact. But what was your experience with that? Like, I remember getting that email and from her and like, I think we might've met that same day. Like it was fast. Yeah, I think it was. You talked about, okay, I want to go meet her and her and her husband go to their house and meet them. And I re- remember thinking like, whoa, what? 
already. <laughs> this seems quick, and I have no idea what we're going to talk about. <laughs> and you were insistent on me being there, which made sense that I was there to support you, but... <laughs> Kind of anticipating it being one of the most awkward experiences ever. I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, you were right. <laughs> it was. I mean, both of us being introverts, <laughs> maybe even more so back then. Yeah. And so thank goodness her husband was um, very friendly and managed to break the ice somehow. I don't remember exactly how, but... Yeah, he was chatty. I remember him talking more than any of the rest of us. Like, put together. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Because I sure didn't know what to say. (laughs) We were really young. (laughs) Yeah. We were super young. Yeah, and then meeting... Remember kind of doing this all over again when we met her parents? Oh, my gosh. That was even uh, possibly more (laughs) awkward. I don't know. That was the worst. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Yeah. No one knew what to say. Yeah. It was super weird. And that was her childhood home. So I was like inside melting down, I think. I don't know. Watching me go through this reunion. Mm -hmm. What was like, like, I don't feel like I included you very much in it. And when it kind of fell apart at the end, I don't know. I just never had a a period at the end, like there was no, this is over. It just was like, she didn't want to talk anymore, but I thought it would, I thought we would resolve it and get back into relationship, but it just never did. So what was your experience of that on your side? Mm -hmm. After meeting her and her husband and then meeting more of the extended family, I don't remember having that many more interactions with her. I know you did on your own mm-hmm. quite a bit from what I remember, or maybe just at the beginning it was quite a bit. And then again with her dad, I know you met with oh yeah your grandpa a fair bit. Mm-hmm. I guess I didn't really have an understanding that things were a little bit rocky for a while there, or I, or I maybe didn't realize you had met with her fairly often and then it just got less and less and I think I I thought for a while that it would become resolved and that you would the relationship would continue it didn't but then you continued a relationship with your grandpa for a while there Mm -hmm. I guess and I really didn't know how to support you it was it was harder on you than I realized and I feel like maybe I didn't realize it until afterwards how important it was to you. At the time, I think I felt that you were disappointed and that that was about it. And I I think it wasn't until your reunion with your dad that I became more aware of how, I don't know if devastating is the right word, but how how hard it was that, that, that you still don't have that relationship with her. Well, I don't know if I really knew how hard it was either like I think I blocked out a lot of that pain and it kind of came out over the years but yeah I don't think I had the words to express it anyway Mm -hmm. okay so you mentioned reunion with my dad so I have been in reunion with him and his uh, wife and my three siblings for almost eight years and you've had a bigger part in this reunion you've you've seen it way more up close including therapy appointments with me and with them so do you want to just kind of give your experience of this this time around it was different in many ways it's uh long distance he's not close it's you know a a full day drive or a a plane right away Mm -hmm. Uh, so the first interactions were, instead of face-to-face, it was over the phone or Skype. I can't remember what we did first. We did Facebook. I don't know if I talked on the phone. I think we did Skype first. Again, awkward. Awkward. Yeah. <laughs> and then, again, early on, you were ready to meet them. 
which I was a little more prepared for from the last time, but still a little surprised how quickly that you wanted to fly out to meet them. But I was much more prepared to be involved and be there. Mm. Like we had agreed, both of us, that I definitely need to be there the first time. And that was a good thing. Yeah. I think I when we went there, if I remember right, I think I was only there for a couple of days and then you stayed yeah. on your own for a couple of days longer. And that surprised me. I, I remember asking you several times, are you sure you're okay to be here on your own? You just met these people in person. <laughs> they seem really nice, but you just met them. So, yeah. So I think we had, well, me anyways, probably both of us had learned some things from the first experience that we wanted to do differently. I was very, very surprised when you found him. First of all, that you found him and that, uh, that there was even a chance of there being a relationship there. I had something set in my mind that whoever this person was, that we're not going to find him. And if we do, he's going to have no interest. And it's been not anywhere close to that. It's been also different because they, uh, him and uh, your dad and his wife have three kids too. So that was also very different. And I think... For me, that almost made it easier in a way. Just it's almost more comfortable that way. Like in awkward situations when you've got now they weren't super young, but when you have kids around, sometimes it's just I don't know, just easier. You can just talk to the kids then and it's less intense, maybe. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of nice. And that <laughs> that was really cool that they they I feel like they opened up to us pretty early on and we're welcoming as well. Yeah. What was it like when I was first in reunion with them? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, this is what I said to you before. <laughs> so, yeah. The word I used <laughs> is that you were a little bit obsessed with them, with him especially. <laughs> so, like, like, life stopped whenever <laughs> he would message on Facebook or text. Espe if the phone was – if he called – then it didn't really matter what was happening. Like, we need to stop right now. <laughs> and Haley needs to talk to him now. Okay, well, just like, <laughs> that's the honeymoon stage of reunion. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, it's weird. <laughs> Which I had no idea about before, obviously. <laughs> that would be something, actually. Okay, so from a non-adopted perspective here, in a relationship with someone that is, if there, when that reunion happens, to know about this, <laughs> because it was weird, <laughs> and it almost got, like, it, it was just, I don't know, for a couple months or whatever, but at first, I, like, sort of tried to understand that, okay, this, obviously, he's very important, and you've missed a lifetime with him, so you want to learn about him and spend time, but it continued further than I thought, and I remember thinking a few months in, like... Man, this guy is like more important to you than I am. Like what's yeah. going on here? So that was a little bit tough. And that would have been something I think that would have been helpful to know. I don't know how I would have known this before, but for someone else that would be experiencing that. Oh, well, okay. So I was seeing June then my therapist after a while, because it got to the point where it was not healthy. You felt less than, mm -hmm. you know, like you weren't the number one. And so June made us right size everything. And that was so hard and so painful, like so necessary. I mean, I think that's what got us through. I don't know what else would have pushed me to do that besides like a professional's help. Because you are so obsessed with making up for lost time and finding out everything about each other and you're just building – a friendship, you know, basically as adults, it was hard. I mean, I mean, I'm sure it was hard on the kids too and and on his relationship with his wife and you know, like it was hard on everyone. <laughs> it just it's so unnatural to be reconnecting as adults. It's so good that you point that out because 
honestly, I think professional help is sort of what's needed to navigate reunion health in a healthy manner. I mean, don't you think June like saved it? <laughs> she saved us. Yeah, totally. Yeah. There was, she had a lot of great ideas and, and understanding about it. That was helpful. Uh, the other thing that was, that took me a while to begin to understand, I think you had a, a fear maybe that the rejection you had experienced was going to happen again. And that was never a thought in my mind. Like it wasn't as black and white as, oh, if I missed this phone call, that's it. We're done. He's never going to call me back. But sometimes it, it felt that way. Like it was so important to connect with him and do not disappoint him, I think. Mm. So, and I think maybe part of that was you had explained to me that you were worried that it could happen again. And I, I didn't feel like that was going to happen, but I began to understand more and more why you might feel that way. Mm. And I think because I, maybe because I had always felt that the relationship with your mom was going to come back together again. So I thought, well, that one, I, I didn't consider that a an all, all out rejection, maybe. Maybe that's what it was. So that's why I didn't consider it to, to happen again. I think maybe only in the last year, I've finally been like, okay, he's not going to leave. <laughs> like, mm. it's taken me that long. Like, I still, even, you know, a year or two ago, would be like, oh my gosh, what if I say the wrong thing? Or what if I, and I think now I finally like, well, if I say the wrong thing, he'll tell me it's wrong and we'll work it out. But I, I still thought like a year ago easily that he'd be like all right we're done wow it, it is it's like this intense fear of rejection because i think almost all adoptees i don't want to say all of us but that's we're born with that we are born rejected and so there's something in our you know spirit that's like well you and your mom didn't want you so this is that's how so that's how we live out our life right mm -hmm. I have a question for you. Okay. In this in this circumstance, in this reunion with your dad, do you think it has been helpful to have some geographical distance in that maybe there's not as much expectation to spend time face to face together or things of that now that now that the relationship is as far along, we'll say. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not saying you want the distance, but maybe in some ways it could could have been helpful or well, I mean, in the first couple years, we didn't have kids yet, and I traveled there very frequently. I think over the years that has probably helped right size the relationship a little quicker yeah i don't i just I definitely don't like being far away like we. I feel like we don't see each other. I'm no. talking about the whole family. We don't see yeah. each other that often. No. Well, and the thing with my birth mom, I mean, you know, as you alluded to, and I shared this in my story in the finale, like she lives in this city. And so sometimes when we're out, I will look for her. Like she doesn't live in our, our, our side of the city, but she's a good, what, 20 minute drive away. I often think... What if I bump into her? That's still in the back of my mind. And even now, 10, 10 plus years after <laughs> that I haven't seen her, right? Yeah. So, What do you think that you have done that's been helpful for me? Like, I think you've been very supportive. And <laughs> especially in reunion, right? You, you were just saying how you kind of felt like you got bumped down to second place when I first met my dad. But... You know, we really navigated through that. What are some things that you think that you were doing that were helpful in that situation? Well. <laughs> I should give you the list. Well, you <laughs> <laughs> you were totally willing to go to counseling with me. Yeah. And, and, you know, we say that, like, we went to counseling together and we did a couple sessions with, um, with them. But really, it was, it was very few that we did together. 
but they were of such significance and impact, it changed the trajectory. So I think your willingness to do that and help me implement the things <laughs> that June advised us to do was really helpful. Yeah, I think what I've tried to do to, I don't know, some some success and some failure probably is to be okay with me not knowing what to do maybe <laughs> <laughs> it's i mean it still is that way it's it's an unknown area it's still new to me even though it's been a while but for me to be able to make sure I'm willing to take a step back and not have answers and just be willing to listen and be there for you and support you. And cause there's, there's still times that you'll have certain emotions or feelings or <laughs> opinions that I don't understand, <laughs> but I think I've come to the point where I'm okay with that. I'm trying to understand, but also to understand from a non-adopted perspective to truly understand what it's like to be adopted. I never, I won't. I never, ever will. And I don't know when I kind of realized that, but I have. And I think that's, for me anyways, has been helpful to try not to necessarily put myself in your shoes or even think that I know what it's like because I don't and I, and I won't and I never will. And that's, that's okay. And I can still be helpful and supportive in other ways. I think you talked about when we were first dating and I told you I was adopted and you were like, okay, cool, whatever. <laughs> to coming to this point where you're like, I'm never going to know what it's like to be adopted. And yet you have a deeper understanding, I think because of what I do, right? I kind of talk about this all the time and you've listened to a lot of the podcast and, you know, you've seen some of my writing online, you've seen some of the interactions. What are some of those pieces that helped you get a bit of a more understanding of my perspective? Yeah. Just, well, yeah, the podcast itself has helped me understand because, or get a little more understanding, I should say, because then I hear stories of, stories upon stories of other people that have similar, not experiences, but I think similar emotions to you. <laughs> so you're like, it's not just her. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, no, kind of, honestly. I know. A little bit. I know. So, yeah, so that that's helped. And then just, just us talking about it and reading some stuff that you've, you've written. You would write um, er, early on in your reunion with your dad. You were writing your blog for a while there. And even that helped me kind of process it a bit, too, because you would talk about what was going on and what emotions you were experiencing and we wouldn't necessarily talk about it, but you were, you would write it and I could see it there and, mm -hmm. and we would talk about it too. But mm -hmm. I think that you through, through the podcast and through social media, there's kind of more of a broader scope. Cause what well, I think too, that you don't want to like just flood me with adoption talk 24 seven. Cause maybe you could, if you wanted to, but <laughs> you know, that I'll go a little bit crazy if we do that. <laughs> This has been a lot about me, and I'm curious, what should I be doing? What should we as adopted people be doing as a support for you, a non-adopted person? Now, let me just pause before you answer that. I feel like I am, I myself, I'm a roller coaster of emotions. I have been through what, two bouts of depression, I think, with you. I have been suicidal. We were engaged, maybe, or maybe we're just dating at that point. I've been through a ton of different counselors <laughs> and uh, psychologists. I'm the whole package roller coaster ride of emotions person. And you are a very steady, 
even keel. I feel like your family is super healthy and tight knit and, you know, you have a wonderful background and upbringing and I'm just challenged. (laughs) So I think that's part of what makes us work because you're stable for me. But as living with someone like me, like what can I do that would be helpful for you to be on this ride together? <laughs> or maybe I'm doing things already. Maybe I'm already doing things right. What am I doing? No, next? you're Well, yeah, you you are more so now than early on. What what you'll do sometimes I've noticed is because I want to make sure I'm supporting you and I'm I'm helpful in whatever way I can be. <clears throat> but sometimes even just to tell me, you know, I just need some time or um, some space or this is kind of just something I'm going through. It's okay. Like you might get emotional about something that I don't understand. And I feel bad for you and I want to help you. And sometimes you, you want me to, and other times you just kind of say, you know, I just need to talk to someone else or, or my counselor about this, or I just need some time or things like that, I guess, just to know where you're at. Cause otherwise if it's some tough emotions or, or I don't know if tough's the right word, what, what I see as you being sad or disappointed or something like that, that I want to make sure I jump in and come to the rescue and help. But it's not, I'm not, I don't think that's always helpful. And you've made me understand that sometimes more so that I don't necessarily, it's not something that I, I can help with or that I will be able to do much about, which is okay. I think that we went to, I guess, would therapy be the right word early on? I was pretty unsure about it, but that was useful. So maybe that's flipping the coin more that the non-adopted person should make sure they're doing that. But I guess just bringing in your, your partner to help when it's needed and then understanding when that's, there's not much they can help with and then that's okay. It doesn't really make much sense, but that's. No, I think it does. I think it really does. Like there is times where I need you to get it. I need you to be like, to understand this is why I'm losing my mind right now because it's easy for the rest of the world to be like, Oh, what's the big deal? Like you have a set of parents, <laughs> like <laughs> why, why is this extra set? You know, so important. Like it's really easy for us to be dismissed over and over and over throughout the day and triggered. Like, I think you have really had a, a huge shift in understanding. I mean, with me, right. I think we've both kind of come out of the fog together, kind of, you know, me a little bit of head. Cause I'm already, I'm the one experiencing them first. And then you're sort of learning, but like even on Sunday, um, in church I, at the end of the service, I was like, so how many times did they say the word adoption this morning? <laughs> and you knew, you knew exactly how many times, because now you hear the things that trigger me. And so I think you've had such a willingness to learn those things alongside of me and listen to like hours and hours of my podcast. Full full disclosure, (laughs) I am not caught up. But you, yeah, I'm a little behind, but I'm doing my best. (laughs) (laughs) There's so many other good podcasts I tell you to listen to before mine, (laughs) which I I don't. Yours is the only one I listen to. Well, my show is not made specifically for you, so I'm not offended that you don't listen to every yes. episode. But I, yeah, I think there's, it's important for me to be able to express my needs to you. And I mean, this is like this in every relationship, right? You can, you're not a mind reader, so how can I expect you to know what I need if I don't tell you? And vice versa, right? I think it goes both ways. I feel like I can easily dominate all the needs section of our relationship though, right? So is there anything you want to say about that, about how do you bring it back to, 
okay, it's not always about you, Haley. Like, I have some stuff too about whatever. I don't know, work or you never have issues, but like, <laughs> if you did. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. I think that's something I could, I mean, that's something I can work on still, but that's something I, in the early days of reunion, that I could have expressed a little better. I was really worried about hurting you any more than you could potentially have been because it was a pretty sensitive time. But those feelings that I referred to earlier of thinking, wow, you're spending so much time with your dad or talking about your dad or it was it was tough because I I really I truly did feel like I was knocked down a notch. Mm. And I don't think I was comfortable I mean, obviously, eventually I was comfortable enough to express that, but I could have maybe done that a little earlier and just maybe even for us to just talk about it a little bit might have been helpful. Mm. I think just to make sure that you're heard as well on the other side, on the non-adopted side, if like if I need your your help or your support to to be be willing to jump in there and that's not really a you thing that's more of a me thing to know when i should do that but i think we're there now i i don't i think we're in a pretty good place i don't think yeah and well like you said you have you have so many outlets now where you have opportunities to talk about those feelings or just about adoption or just about your experience yeah which is awesome i think that's been super helpful for both of us oh yeah i feel like just over the course of the podcast in the last couple years, I have processed so much more than the rest of my whole life. And I'm going to mm-hmm. be 35 this year. <laughs> so like 33 years of issues <laughs> and then processing them in the last really couple years with lot, lots, lots to go. But um, yeah, and I'm excited that you've had some opportunity recently to even have some face-to-face conversations with people in our area and also not. So it seems to be such a, it has been a great experience from my perspective. Like it just like brings life to you almost to (laughs) be able to talk with someone with the same or similar experiences, which is something I can't offer and that's fine. And that's, so that's super helpful. For both of us, I think, for you to have that. So, like, we're going to wrap this up. So, the takeaways are everyone should be in therapy and you should go with your partner and you should find some adoptees to talk about everything with because your partner will never fully get it and Mm -hmm. they don't want to hear about it all the time. Sometimes it's okay. Is that our big takeaway? (laughs) Yeah, totally. And therapy... (laughs) Was not, I don't know, I remember going four or five times maybe. I mean, it's going to be different for everyone, but it it doesn't necessarily have to be this huge time commitment. Yeah, I agree with those takeaways. And it's not freaky. Like, no, it's not like this weird, like, one hour of weirdness. It's just having a conversation with someone else there to sort of mediate and... Yeah, and and you did a great job finding someone good that... Had, had I think she had some experience with this. Oh yeah. Because I'm sure there's Lots. there's probably many people that don't, so that might be kind of tricky. Mm-hmm. And learn the lingo, because I didn't know. Like <laughs> she's talking about out of the fog and triggering, and, and I had no idea what that meant. And so yeah, you just said that I'm more aware. Like we'll go to a movie or church or some some sort of event and it's it's not even intentional anymore my mind is just tuned in to whenever they're going to talk about adoption so that's i think the, well no that it's, it's helpful because i at least then afterwards i can kind of say you know are you good do we need to talk about it how are you feeling about this and then i it helps me rather than a few years ago just going to something that i thought was relatively pleasant and you were kind of angry after and i didn't know why <laughs> 
That's so, I'm laughing because it's so true. We'll be watching TV and then I will just get so mad because there'll be something about an option that is completely false. And then you, now you get it, right? But it used to be, you're like, what is your problem? Yeah. And I, and I didn't even know how to explain it. Like, I didn't know. I didn't know what was triggering me, but now I do. So Thanks, honey. Is there mm-hmm. anything else you want to, to say? <laughs> before you say goodbye and wait is it how much you're looking forward to season four you just can't wait you got to get caught up with season three yeah and- so yeah <laughs> totally keep listening okay. um, no i don't know if you're gonna throw this in there but send me some money is that my- what you're gonna say no i'm gonna say <laughs> that you work really hard on it and that but you do thoroughly enjoy it mm from my perspective you are really blessing other people with this with this podcast however on the flip side i feel like this community that you're blessing is also giving back to you in a Mm. big way too so yeah thank you for doing that which i cannot (laughs) thanks honey okay friend next week season four starts I'm excited about all the different guests I have booked. I have names that you have heard of, names that I will be introducing you to. We even have a topic that's very sensitive and we will be um, doing it anonymously and a huge variety of topics all under the umbrella of relationships. I know you're going to be finding it valuable. I can't wait to share what I've recorded. Also, I will be continuing on in the healing series. I have a couple of new therapists to introduce you to very soon who are experts in this field of adoption and recovering from adoption trauma. So many awesome things coming up. And I want to tell you, I could not do this show weekly without the financial support I get from people who are doing one-time donations and my monthly supporters. I just thank you so much. You are keeping this show going and thank you for standing with me and thank you for saying with your money, your actual hard-earned money, I, I can't believe it. You're just, you're saying that this is important and it's valuable and you want it to keep going. So I'm so grateful to you for that. Uh, words can't express how thankful I am. So if that's something that you want to stand with other adoptees, you can make a one-time donation at adopteeson.com or to partner up with me monthly, adopteeson.com slash partner, and all the details are available there. Come and connect with me, adopteeson.com slash newsletter has our monthly newsletter subscription link, and all of our social media accounts are linked there as well. Just search at adopteeson on Instagram or Twitter, and you can also look for me, Haley Radke, on your favorite socials. Thank you so much for listening. Let's talk again next Friday when we kick off season four, Relationships Together. I mean, basically, it feels like every day you come home from work or else we're like chatting and I'll be like, oh, my gosh, look at this message I just got. Oh, my gosh, look at this email I got just got or I just got a new Patreon supporter. Like, it feels like close to every day yeah. that I get to show you that. And so I hope I hope that is helpful for you to know how important this project is of mine, because it does take away a lot of time with you and the family to work on it so Mm -hmm. yeah thanks love thanks for talking to me and if you if you want to tweet you no okay (laughs) (laughs) okay that's a no